And there you have it, the closing bell at the New York Stock Exchange, signaling the end of the trading day. The Dow Jones made decent gains throughout the day, ending up around 370 points. And the S&P and NASDAQ also posted gains to start the week. Both finished the day up about 1%. So for more on what is moving the market, Stephen Gandell joins us now. He's a news editor for the New York Times Dealbook. Stephen, welcome. Great to have you with us. So I want to ask you about Peloton. Do you think that the move today will help boost the company's numbers, which until today have been on a pretty steady decline this year? Well, the investors liked it, right? The stock was up today. I think that it's going to, um, well, not maybe not boost a number, but it's going to lower a number, and that's expenses, right? They're... They're, they announced um, around 800 million in cost savings. They're letting go 2,800 people. So I think that they, the biggest problem Peloton had is at the beginning of the pandemic, they, said, they saw all these sales. They, they got more orders than bikes that, for bikes that they could ever sell. And so they just started making them, making them, making them. And then uh, it turned out the demand wasn't straight up. It was up and then leveled off. So, um, and as people got, went back, have gone back to the gym and, and re-entered life and left their homes, they're using their Peloton Plus. So uh, I'm not sure that this improves their results. It gives them a steady hand. This is a seasoned executive coming in from, uh, he had been at Spotify. Uh, it's a seasoned executive coming in. Um, it's someone who's gonna have a little better con uh, handle of con costs than Foley, the, 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 the former. The, the CEO is leaving, but I'm not sure this turns around their uh, sales just yet. Hmm. I'd be interested to see, too, if those uh, the cost of the bikes come down at all, because they're pretty, right. like $3,000, I think. At, and at the subscription point. is really expensive, right? Yeah. That's the other part of it. Um, they you know, actually have raised the cost, right? Because now they're charging people for delivery. So effectively, the cost goes up. I mean, the, the problem is they don't make money. They 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 lost. They said they announced a, about 500 million losses. They really got to figure a way to make money if they, you know, want to stick around. Well, you just said, too, with the elimination of those jobs, about $800 million in cost savings. Do you think that what we're seeing with Peloton will become a trend for other subscription-based companies? Well, I, you know, they have a particular problem that's different than uh, Spotify or, or Netflix, right? You got to buy this really expensive piece of mm -hmm. equipment. Uh, at least as the company currently is, you got to buy this really expensive piece of equipment in order to get in on their streaming service. So I, I think I don't think it's a problem that some of the other streamers have. Clearly, Netflix, uh, uh, right. is, their growth is slowing, but uh, I, I think it's a little bit a problem just a Peloton and how they overexpanded coming into the pandemic. Yeah, you're, you're, to your point, they have to bar, the, the bar is high. You've got to buy this expensive bike before you can even get People in. People swear right, by it, though. I yeah. know, <laughs> I know. All right, let's shift gears a bit to talk about electric vehicles. As you know, President Biden announced today a partnership with an Australian company to build the first U.S. electric car charger manufacturing facility in Tennessee. So how is the electric vehicle market growing and what more can we expect to see from it? It's growing very fast. It's doubled. Uh, was you know two percent of cars in the U.S. Now four percent of cars last year. Worldwide, it's nine percent. So we have some ways to catch up. Uh, it's even growing faster in Europe and Asia. So it's really on a significant growth path. But there are certain things that are still kind of roadblocks, and one of the main roadblocks for electric vehicles is chargers. Right? We really haven't figured out in an urban setting. Uh, if everyone in a large building, say in New York or, or some other city, has a car, has an electric car, how do they charge that? Where 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 are we going to have? We don't have anywhere near enough uh, street spots, even if every spot had a charger. So um, uh, to to to, and so so that's something we still got to figure out. So Stephen, and, did you uh, see the story today though that this Israeli company has come up with a way to charge your car, your electric car as you're driving? It's a road that's got a charger in it, and they have a contract already to get one of those built here in the states. I, I didn't see that. I I know that um, there are solutions out there, but they're not ones that um, that that we know will work. Right. And that's a problem. And the other problem is that the cars are still kind of expensive, and and so while we've seen more and more sales of these cars. Uh, it, this could be just kind of a shift to um, the, the wealthier, you know, the, the fact that America is richer and, and there's a certain portion of America, a larger portion that maybe can afford these expensive cars. But when we move back, move into the larger portion of the American consumer, uh, that's still going to be out of reach. All right. Well, Stephen Gandell, thank you so much for your financial insight. We appreciate it.
Thank you.